Okay. There we go. Dr. Wilson, any thoughts on STEM? Getting our young people into STEM. It's one thing getting them over the hoops, uh, getting them over the hurdles in terms of economics, uh, getting them in, but specifically STEM, science, technology, engineering, math. You have the best engineering program when it comes to black college graduates in the nation. Hands down. We yes, have, sir. We have an outstanding engineering program in Morgan. And you know, Donna, we actually lead the United States in several categories as it relates to the production of black graduates in STEM fields. And so at Morgan, we're number one in the United States, of course, in producing black electrical engineers. We're number one in producing black industrial engineers. And we are number three in producing black engineers overall. And then we also are sending about 35% of our students at Morgan who finish in STEM fields on to graduate and professional schools. But what we really need more of is the financial assistance that is necessary to keep these students, particularly in the STEM fields, moving toward their degrees. Because these students cannot work jobs where they are working 40 hours a week uh, and then have the kind of um, uh, attention you know, to spend in math and chemistry and some of these other courses that are very, very demanding. Uh, and so that's sort of what we're seeing at Morgan. I, I got to ask you this slightly political question. Okay. Maryland being touted some of the best schools, public schools in the country. But as you know, Baltimore City, Prince George's County of 24 jurisdictions are consistently at the bottom. You know, on the one hand, we have state officials bragging that we have the best public schools, but on the other hand, Baltimore and Prince George have two of the worst uh, stats. Well, you know, I've been very impressed with uh, what I've seen in Baltimore in the last uh, three and a half years uh, in terms of the improvement of the public schools, and I think we're headed in the right direction. Uh, I am really looking forward to the selection of the new uh, superintendent and CEO in Baltimore uh, to follow uh, uh, Dr. Andres and the great job that he did. Well, we're, but, we're going to have to... The, he, we, yeah. Your friend is here, the, the president. <laughs> we don't want to hold that up. Yeah, yeah. This is the president of Morehouse College. Yes, sir. Morehouse alum here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Morgan yeah, and State and University. Morgan yes, sir. University. So, you know, we're claiming Donnie is all Baltimore. You know. All right, all right. Uh, all so, right. this is all good. But we were talking about STEM. So, both Dr. Wilson and Dr. Wilson. Uh, just keeping our young people engaged in STEM, as challenging as it is. Yeah, and then what I was saying is that, of course, you know, we have a lot of students who are majoring in STEM fields who unfortunately have to work, and they are working 20, 30 hours a week. And that is not a good equation for keeping students in this field that is very, very demanding. And so we have to figure out even more ways of providing them with the financial assistance so they can reduce their work hours and concentrate more on these very, very demanding uh, disciplines. Good deal. Good deal. We are uh, at about 150, somewhere between 150, 180 STEM students a year that are graduating from Morehouse College. It has been an emphasis. There was a surge forward under Walter Massey. Uh, I've talked with Walter about what he did. Uh, I've been around the country. We're going to surge even more. If we double that, uh, it will barely make a dent in, in this country in terms of the underrepresentation of African American males. But we plan to more than double it. Because we believe that uh, more STEM graduates who come from Morehouse uh, can help make a statement around the country and around the world. How do we keep our young men engaged? Okay. Okay, 18 years old. How do we keep the young men interest, interested in college? It, it, so many more distractions in 2014 than 10, 15 years ago. I think you've heard a lot of that answer uh, today. I think there's no mystery. It, it's not a mystery at all. We have to reach back and start sooner. Uh, we are, you know, our, our families uh, give them assistance. Uh, and, uh, our churches can kick in colleges. We have a program called Project Identity, where which started with ninth and tenth graders. Now we're reaching back to sixth, seventh, and eighth grade and getting them on track. So I, I, I think early intervention, uh, early partnering is is the way. Do threats help? Say? Threats. You know, uh, my, my mom. From parents to <laughs> parents. the kids know, uh, love them, sometimes work. Morehouse.edu, Morgan.edu. Let me just add to that as well. You know, I think we have to take charge of the dialogue again. I think we're kind of losing this dialogue now about why college is needed, is college necessary. And I think we have to go back to our communities and say, you know what, college is absolutely necessary. And here are the benefits of college. And I think the more we put that in front of our young people and show them the benefits of a college education, the better off we all will be. Dr. Wilson, we appreciate you. All right.